my queen. Sorry, buddy. Elements don't mix. Sip! 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 Pixar have a new movie by the name of Elementals. And this movie isn't doing very well at the box office. In fact, it says here that the film went on to debut to $29.5 million, finishing in second and marking and, and marking the second worst three-day opening weekend ever for a Pixar film behind only the $29 million, which is basically $56 million with inflation opening of Toy Story in 1995, which sold significantly more tickets. Now, some people will try and convince you that this movie isn't doing well or because of the marketing or because other movies were released at the same time. But if your movie was genuinely good, it would be receiving the word of mouth that it needs and people would be flooding to go watch it. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my own personal analysis. I went to watch the movie. I watched the whole thing. And I can feel that the, the issues in this movie can be found actually in the first 20 minutes of the film. So I'm not going to spoil everything. I'm going to keep it mainly to the first 20 to 30 minutes of the movie, giving you my own personal analysis of why this movie just isn't gripping audiences to go make them watch it in the theater. My first issue with this film is the lack of culture and the setup is just wrong. The setting of the movie is wrong. You have all these element people, fire, water, air, earth, which also kind of reminds me of like Avatar, the last airbender. Yeah, if you watch that animation. So also the story feels like it's already familiar and it's treading stuff that I've already seen before. But you have these four elements living in the city and there is no culture. I mean, yeah, sure, they're in the city. Therefore, you can say they're living the city life. But I'm Kenyan, for example, and if you go to my capital, which is Nairobi, I can tell you that, you know, this is downtown, this is uptown. In that side of the city, this happens. In that side of the city, this happens. In this side, this is where you can find this CBD, Central Business District. This is what happens. Culture, the way people live. So, like, there's this scene where you have the water people riding in a subway train with, like, the fire people. And I'm like, why shouldn't there be? Can you imagine how better the movie would be if you had like water people being like fishermen and then they were like sailing on boats and then fire people are like this are rich aristocrats or something and then they live in like castles and then the earth people are like these humble farmers. They have like different lives, different ways of moving around. They don't blend into each other. They have like different parts where they stay and different lifestyles. It would have made the story so much more rich. And I felt like they should have done that in the first 20 minutes. In the first 20 minutes of this movie, if you watch it and I asked you to tell me how do the fire people live? How do the water people live? Or what makes the fire people different from the water people? You wouldn't have had an answer because these people tend to just live in the same, they're all mishmash into the same setting with no difference. In fact, if you just took the main character and made her, let's say, an, uh, an earth person, and then made the love interest a water person, and then, you know, when the water person touches the earth person, maybe she melts and becomes mad. You see, like, would it have been really a different story? Instead of having the main character, she loses her temper, and then she blows up into flames. If she was an earth person, and then maybe she shot out, like, I don't know, spikes, rock spikes, would it have made the story any different, you see? It, it's lacking culture. The people can be interchanged with one another and the story would not lose anything. You can just switch out people and the story would not lose anything. There's this one scene where you see the male uh, water boy character, main character, he runs through a wall and then I was like, oh, you know, that's an advantage of being a water person, I guess. And then suddenly you see the girl who's a fire person, she just runs through the same wall, like in between the space. And I'm like, the characters are kind of the same. They're not, they're not that far apart, really. But in terms of like physical attributes and culture, they're kind of very similar. Number two has to do with the humor of the film. Pixar, Pixar has always done humor really well. I don't know why the humor of this movie is so bad. Earth can be a little seedy. <laughs> Nothing weird going on here. Uh, just a little pruning. Are you serious? There are so many scenes where I kept finding myself like I should have laughed there, but I just wasn't feeling it. And I mean, whatever film it is, 
For example, let's take something like Finding Nemo. It doesn't matter which character it was, whether it was Merlin, Nemo himself, the aquarium fish, Dory, the humor was always on point. And for those of you who are going to say, well, it's just a kid's film, I mean, no wonder it's flopping if you only expect children to go see it. These movies, these animated films, the ones that do best are the ones that appeal both to adults and kids. But this one, if you're going to say the, the humor is meant for children, no wonder it's doing so badly. I mean, there's this one scene where they show you some kid drinking lighter fluid and that's supposed to be some sort of funny pun. There's also that joke from the trailer. <laughs> jokes are this i mean it's so sad the level of writing at pixar nowadays it's it's very sad to see how far they've gone down uh number three would have to be just the characters the characters to me are so remarkably one-dimensional i mean the girl is trying to inherit the family business and she needs to control her temper to be able to uh, inherit a family business that's mainly it the water boy main character, well, he's emotional and he wears his heart on his sleeve. And then the dad main character, I mean, apart from him being a dad and a store owner, I can't tell you anything about him. Very forgettable characters. I can't relate with them. There's also like this one scene where the girl is like um, saving, the, the, the main character girl is saving the boy, water boy character. And, you know, she's like this, she kind of has like this masculine traits of being angry and strong and the boy is like sort of vulnerable and emotional i was like i'm sorry i just i just don't click with this anymore uh, my fourth issue would be the generic nature of this movie i mean if you look at a, an animated film like pixar monsters inc for example that was a really cool concept monsters scaring kids and then turning the scare into energy so whether it's wally -E up you know getting a house to float up and with balloons, these are like really cool concepts, but this one is just generic. It's just, they decided to make a love story in a city and it's they just decided, well, let's just change that, change the characters into elements so that we have the whole fire, bad, water, good allegory to show, you know, different races dating and just, it just wasn't working for me. Also, I would say the animation style, I don't know, Comment below and tell me if you feel like the animation style was good to me. It just was not good. If I compare it to something like Toy Story, The Incredibles, um, A Bug's Life, A Bug's Life, yeah, where they do like city life of insects and you see all these like dope creative designs. Uh, I felt like this one was very lackluster. Also, the way the water boy character and the way the main girl meet up by him getting sucked into the pipes and then like that one was such a huge contrivance in my eyes I, you're telling me that he got sucked in and he just happened to be a water inspector who ends up ruining the life of the main character like that was such a contrivance i felt like literally anyone else could have been sucked up literally anyone else could have been sucked up but anyway those are just my thoughts as to why this story isn't so captivating to go see in cinemas I can see the Rotten Tomato score is high, but why aren't people going to see it? Those are just my thoughts. Give me yours in the comment section. Um, smash the like button, subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next one.